Hey guys, it's Cece, and I'm coming at you from a slightly different angle to give you some monthly recommendations. So the reason I'm at this moderately different angle that I'm actually kind of liking right now is that I'm filming a little bit later in the day, so the glare on my glasses when I sit normally, which is a little bit straighter, is terrible. You can tell when I'm turning. In case you do not know, Monthly Recommendations is a group that was created by Kayla from Kayla Rain and Trina from Between Chapters, and it is a group that basically you get a theme each month, and you can recommend as few books or as many books as you would like based on that theme. I love doing these videos and this month's theme was standalones, which I think is a really really good theme because as I was making this list I was kind of like, I was going through some old standalones that I usually recommend and somehow they've all become series and duologies and trilogies and that kind of annoys me. So I'm going to be recommending to you some standalones that I think are really fantastic because I think that possibly YA right now is super obsessed with series and everything has to be a duology. Every YA contemporary has to have a second book that's from the other person's perspective and I think that it's great if you can just limit your story to one book. I think that that's really a sign of some excellent writing. So let's just get into this and I can talk about some of my favorite standalones. The first one that I'm going to recommend is Ella Enchanted by Gail Carson Levine. This is one of my all-time favorite books. I've talked about it plenty so... This is a middle grade book and it is a retelling of the story of Cinderella, but in this retelling Ella is a girl who was mistakenly cursed by a fairy when she was a baby so that she obeys and must obey every order given to her. This book was incredibly influential to me in my life and as growing up as a girl this was just very important to me. It was a lot about agency and about Ella growing and learning to deal with the fact that she doesn't have a lot of agency and it's just an overall beautiful book and it is a beautiful retelling. This is what spurned my love of retellings to be honest with you. It all started here. The characters are really fun, not to mention the fact that this has an absolutely incredible romance that to this day remains one of my absolute favorites. So I just highly, highly recommend Ella Enchanted. It is a middle grade book, but I think that it is a great book to read at any age because I think that Ella is such a beautiful, important character and that everyone should read a bit about her. The next book that I'm going to be recommending is Sharp Objects by Gillian Flynn. I read this book last year and absolutely loved it. I mean, of course I loved it. It's Gillian Flynn. If you're looking for standalone books and you love thrillers, and you like psychological books, just read Gillian Flynn if, I mean, I probably could have just made this a Gillian Flynn recommendations video. But Sharp Objects is the one that I read the most recently. It follows our main character, Camille, who is a journalist fresh out of a stint in a psych hospital. And she goes back to her hometown because there is some sort of mystery going on there and her boss wants her to cover it as a journalist because there are girls who have turned up dead and it's this big mystery. In the vein of Gillian Flynn, this is an incredibly messed up book and the way I like to think about it most is that it is small town turned up by about 11 notches. It has our regular Gillian Flynn kind of messed up main female character who I absolutely love. I, th I think Gillian Flynn writes incredible female characters who are usually completely unlikable, but are wonderful, wonderful characters. This is definitely my second favorite Gillian Flynn book of all time. I just think it's great, I think it's intense, and it is really quick so you can get through it in a very short amount of time. So I highly recommend this one. And now an author I feel like I haven't talked about enough recently on my channel because I used to be obsessed with him, but I'm going to talk about him now, and I'm going to be talking about the book Burn, and this is by Ted Decker as well as Aaron Healy. Ted Decker was a favorite author of mine for a long time, and I've read a good number of his books, and for the most part, they're pretty consistent. You can read just about any of them, and they're fantastic. If you're looking for other standalone Ted Decker books, I also really recommend Three, Kiss, and Adam. But I'm going to be talking about Burn. Burn is a thriller as well. Ted Decker writes excellent thrillers. They're always really fast-paced and there's always a lot of adrenaline running through them and they're really interesting. I don't want to tell you too much about this book. It, it has a very fantastical element as a lot of his books do. And technically Ted Decker is a Christian author so some of his books reflect that but I don't think it's like overbearing. I mean I don't I don't really notice it when I'm reading his books um, unless you read the circle books. I think that's more apparent in that series. But in Burn, I just think it's beautiful and I think the main character is really interesting and this is definitely one of his stronger ones. 
really intense, really keeps you interested, and the mystery just keeps unfolding in more and more dramatic ways, and you cannot put it down. This is a great book, and Ted Decker and Aaron Healy make a really great pair. They also wrote Kiss Together, which is the one I mentioned earlier. That one's also really great. And now for a graphic novel that is a standalone graphic novel, and that is Nimona by Noelle Stevenson. After reading this book in January, how could I not recommend it over and over and over again? This book follows a character named Nimona, and she kind of drops in on this villain named Ballister Blackheart, and she just tries to make all of his villainous plots even more evil than they already were. Also, Nimona is a shapeshifter, which is really fun, and the way that is done is magnificent. This book has some really, really fun art. It is just so enjoyable to read. I love, love Noel Stevenson's style. I think it's really fantastic. And beyond the fact that it's just a really fun graphic novel, it also has this vein of really serious stuff going on with Nimona, and the development of that character is so fascinating, and I really love it. Seriously, the way this book wraps up is so satisfying and interesting and so complex in a way that I didn't expect it to be, so I highly, highly recommend that you check out Nimona in case you haven't already because, of course, it is quite a big book here on booktube. The next book that I'm going to recommend is It's Kind of a Funny Story by Ned Vizzini. It has been a few years since I've read this book, but the story has stayed with me and I just think that it's a very good book. It follows a boy named Craig who checks himself into a mental hospital after he is tempted to commit suicide and he ends up being in the adult ward instead of the teen ward and he just kind of meets all of these people and develops as a person and it's just a fascinating and wonderful book. I think it's incredibly well written and I think it does some really important things and it's just stayed with me. I think that it's a beautiful book that more people should read. I know a lot of people have read it but they read it years and years ago because it is an older book. This book also has a pretty good adaptation that does not it does not get all the characters in there, and it does not quite do the book justice, but it is a pretty good movie on its own if you're interested. But this is a really interesting YA contemporary, and I think it just does a very good job of dealing with teen suicide in a way that is different, because I think a lot of YA books now are all reactionary and how everyone else deals with how someone committed suicide, and I appreciate that this is in the mind of someone who's actively trying to fight against that, and I just think it makes a really interesting book. The next one I'm going to recommend is Horns by Joe Hill, and this is a very interesting book. Basically, it follows the main character, Ig, who wakes up one morning and finds that horns are growing out of his forehead, and he's trying to figure out what that means because no one else can see the horns, but now, whenever he tells someone to do something, they just do it. It goes between that as well as a story from a few years earlier from his childhood into fairly recently because there's something that happened in his past that has made him this really depressed person, and it kind of talks about that too. This is a kind of a messed up book, to be honest with you. It's horror, but there are trigger warnings for sexual assault, and there are some just very messed up characters. It's one of the only books that I've ever had to set down in the middle of reading it and walk around a few times before I could come back and pick it up again because it was just getting in my head. But overall, the writing is so good and the character of Ig is so interesting that it's kind of a thick little book, but you just keep flipping through it, even through parts that are slower, because you have to get back to the present day storyline that's happening, even though you kind of don't want to, because part of you is like, I have to know what happened, and the other part's like, I don't want to know what happens. So Joe Hill is just, he wrote this book really successfully, and I really want to read other Joe Hill books because of this one, so I highly recommend it. Although, if you have read the book, I don't really recommend seeing the movie, because I don't think the movie does a good job of portraying what the book was going for, so those are my thoughts on that. I talked a little bit more about that in my least favorite adaptations video, but yes. And the final book that I'm going to recommend is Almost Like Being in Love by Steve Kluger. This is a sweet romance book. This kind of follows two different storylines. There is Travis and Craig when they are young in like the 70s falling in love, and then it also follows their storylines 20 years later when Travis realizes that the last 20 years of his life haven't been as perfect as he wanted them to be because he's still in love with Craig. And Travis ends up going on this big journey to try and track down Craig again to inform him, hey, I still love you and I still think that our relationship is important. This book is also in alternative format. There are a lot of memos and lists and responses, so it looks really cool on the inside. 
it just looks like a lot of this which is really cool i particularly like travis's boyfriend checklists where he sees if um, his boyfriends check off all of the stuff on his required list. I think those are really funny. But this book is like gooey to the extreme. You kind of get a cavity when you're done reading it because everything is so sweet and romantic. And Travis's just enthusiasm for love is so infectious while you're reading it. So I highly recommend this book. This isn't young adult. It is adult fiction. So know that going in as well. I tried to have a good mix of different age groups. With these standalones but yeah i've recommended this book so many times because i just think it's amazing and i think it is worth the praise okay guys there you go those are my monthly recommendations for the month of march i hope that you go out and you pick up some really excellent standalones this month and appreciate the standalone because i feel like they're not being appreciated as much right now and i am kind of not into the whole thing with duologies and different perspectives i just Sometimes I just want to read one book and have it really strike me as incredible. In the comments below, please let me know what some of your favorite standalones are, or let me know a duology that you really felt didn't need that second book in the duology. I'd be curious to hear about that as well. So thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you in another video very soon. Bye!